What's up, y'all? It's your boy Scotty LaDuke from the Fortress of Nerditude. What I've been working on the last few days is a PC build that is actually an upgrade of an old machine that I bought a couple of years ago. Those who don't know who I am, when I make these videos, the idea is that I always try to squeeze a little extra value out of the things that you've already got so that you don't have to spend a whole lot of money. I came around to buying this machine because I needed to update my video editing computer. I had an old late 2006 iMac that I bought a long time ago. It served me well, but needless to say, it's way outdated. So I got this ultra slim HP desktop refurbished from Micro Center for less than $150. I know this probably seems like a terrible replacement for a Macintosh of any generation, but I hadn't done much research and all I knew was that this HP had a 2.8 gigahertz quad core i7 and 4 gigs of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM. My Mac only had a 2.16 gigahertz dual core processor and it was maxed out with 3 gigabytes of 667 megahertz DDR2 RAM. So without knowing any better looking at the raw specs you might think that there would be a big jump in performance here and in some respects it was a much more powerful computer than my Mac which I spent about $1200 on in 2006 by the way. However, because I edit video occasionally, I learned that a project file with multi-layered effects and color correction is way too much of a software load for the integrated graphics of this CPU. So I decided to take the i7 out of this HP, build a new machine around it with new, more current parts, including a cheap, discrete graphics card. But I still wanted to keep it budget and not spend too much just to see if I could boost performance, particularly with graphics related tasks. So Asus is the name I'm most familiar with and I found a ton of these micro ATX motherboards on eBay for about $50. The reseller had really high ratings so I felt comfortable making this purchase. The hope was that a board with expanded capacity and more powerful slots might give me the chance to improve performance. So I started looking for a motherboard that fit this particular CPU socket which was an LGA 1155. It shipped fast and also came with the stock Intel cooling fan and heat sink which was not expected. Once the motherboard came, I went to Micro Center for the rest of what I needed. I picked up a GeForce GT710 for $52, more on that later. I got two LED cooling fans for $5 a piece, got a one terabyte mechanical hard drive from Toshiba for $29, and believe it or not, my PC case came with a 400 watt power supply included in it, and it was only $27.99, more on that later as well. And lastly, I spent $80 on an 8 gigabyte, 1600 megahertz RAM kit from Crucial. So I'd never really done this before, and the whole process has pretty much been an experiment for me. The most I'd done in the past was update RAM or swap out a bad hard drive. So needless to say, this is not the video to watch if you want to learn how to properly build a machine. I actually watched dozens of videos from other content creators here on YouTube in order to ensure I didn't break something. In fact, I'll link to a few of the best ones that were really helpful in understanding the critical steps both in making an informed choice as well as the actual build process. Also, I guess it's relevant to mention that since I bought that HP, I've gone back and actually updated my primary video editing computer with a proper desktop that has some decent current generation specs which is the computer I'm actually making this video with. So in the interest of saving time, I'm speeding through this disassembly process of the Ultra Slim HP case. It was pretty easy to take apart and for anybody that actually has one of these or a similar machine and you're interested in removing the processor for your own build or an upgrade like this one, just rewind this portion of the video and take your time going through it. The only tool you'll probably need is a small screwdriver. After removing the heat sink, I noticed that there was a lot of thermal compound on the processor, more than there probably should have been. It's my understanding that the best option is to remove used thermal compound and reapply a fresh layer when repurposing a CPU. Once the build was done, I was very happy to see the tower light up without the power supply exploding. However, when the monitor did not wake up, it occurred to me that I plugged into the VGA port of the motherboard, which I believe is disabled when you install a dedicated video card. When I switched the monitor to the GT710 port, I got the splash screen. This was a huge relief considering I had to clean thermal compound off of the actual contacts of the CPU during the install. I was fully prepared for this machine not to boot and extremely excited to see it come to life. So after updating the motherboard's BIOS and installing Windows, I wanted to see what this hoopty of a computer could do. I ran the Windows Experience Index before and after to attempt to get an apples to apples comparison. But that wasn't quite possible. For those who aren't familiar, the Windows Experience Index is Microsoft's way of helping consumers get a relative sense of how one PC compares to another. 
It's literally just the operating system measuring key hardware components without the added software load or interaction of third party applications like games or editing software. So for a couple of reasons, you have to consider results from this index with a grain of salt. To get a more realistic sense of how the two builds matched up, I conducted some generic real world benchmarks to see what would happen. With each build, I opened two Chrome tabs simultaneously playing YouTube videos and then opened an HD video clip in two separate windows also, one using Windows Media Player and the other using VLC Player. While both builds seemed to handle this fairly well, the HP with no graphics card did exhibit some tiling in the VLC window, but not much. So getting back to the reason for this project in the first place, my Mac was still working 10 years later and I was able to complete a ton of projects with it. It was just that there were times when I would literally have to begin rendering, go to sleep, and wake up the next morning to find that the project still had a couple hours left before it'd be done rendering. I'm sure some of you feel my pain on this. It's not that it didn't work. It was just really inefficient. So it was definitely an education for me to find out that I could buy a much newer machine with considerably faster and more RAM, a newer, faster processor with double the cores plus hyper threading, yet still underperform relative to the 10 year old dinosaur I was trying to replace. I'm far from an authority on the subject, but my observations and limited research have led me to conclude that the difference maker in this instance was the HP's lack of video processing power. Even though it was about 10 years old, the iMac had a small dedicated ATI graphics card built into it, but the HP only had the integrated graphics of the Sandy Bridge i7. This was Intel's HD 2000 graphics, and my understanding is that this particular iteration of integrated graphics was pretty bad, relatively speaking. Intel and AMD apparently have pretty solid integrated graphics built into their processors on current generation machines, but according to the Tech Deals channel, one of my favorite YouTubers, this chip was pretty inferior in that regard. I'll link to his channel below. He actually made a video about the class of graphics card that I use in this build relative to the types of systems that may or may not benefit from installing one. By the way, the GT710 that I bought was $52 because I sprung for the 2 gig version with GDDR5 VRAM. However, there were 1 gig versions available with DDR3 for about 30 bucks. So the big takeaway here for me was that choosing the right PC has everything to do with what you'll be using it for. Not so much comparing specs on your CPU and your RAM necessarily. I think I made out okay on this upgrade spending about $250 for a budget rig. Definitely capable of some light gaming or video editing or streaming. The fact is if I had any idea what I was doing going into this I probably could have just bought the graphics card, the $30 version, kept the same motherboard which would have allowed me to use the same low profile so dim RAM which is already installed and put it in my nice cheap $28 case. $58 sounds pretty good to me. So for those of you who have one of these refurbished HP desktops and there's still a million of them on eBay still today for less than $150 just know that if you want to play games on it or maybe do some light video editing it's not the CPU or the RAM getting in your way Go buy that $30 graphics card and see what happens. For 30 bucks, you really can't go wrong.